Welcome back again, everybody, to another episode or part two of this week's episode of NB Bass. I am Donald Patterson, your host, joining you again from Nova Scotia for a change. I, uh, before I continue, as always, thanks go out to Fish Bomb Outfitters, Carrot Stitch Rods, Southern Yankee Baits, War Dog Lures, Northern Michigan Outfitters, Hooked on Canadian Angling, and most importantly, my wife and my son. As always, my hat's off to these businesses and individuals because without their support, uh, doing what I do just you know becomes a whole lot harder. I apologize if there's excessive background noise. I am traveling and the road's a little rough. But that's just a good way to remind myself that Nova Scotia roads aren't a bit better than New Brunswick roads. So, something that... I want to touch on, I've been asked, I, I've spoken about it in the past, and I've been asked about it a couple times in the, you know, in, 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 well, just recently, pro staffing, field staff, uh, positions, you know, representing companies as I do with Fish Bum, Carrot Stick, Southern Yankee, and so on. Uh, these are not programs that are for everyone. It's not like most of us quote unquote weekend warriors. We're not making a living at this. We are not sponsored pros. You know, we refer to these businesses as our sponsors and they they are sponsors to a point. They're not endorsement deals. They're not you know, big money pay, you know, they're not paying my bills. Uh, I represent companies whose products I use and, you know, who provide me with those products, uh, you know, for promotional purposes and for my personal use. In most cases, and that's why I, I'm kind of choosing my words carefully in most cases one of the conditions of a pro staff field staff type agreement is you're not allowed to divulge just exactly what you get or how you get it so I have to be careful how I work this but you want to make sure there's all kinds of companies looking for staffers you know, they're, they're out there. If you join the website nationalprostaff.com, nps.com, there are all kinds of companies looking for staffers. Uh, the thing is, is you have to find the ones that are the right fit for you, that aren't expecting you to give your life away, basically. You don't want to have to sell your soul to the devil, so to speak, that... Uh, you know, the, the, what the, their expectations versus what you get in return can't be too high. You know, if you're getting, and I'm just using a generic example, this is not one of my agreements, this is nothing specific. Uh, but if you are offered a product or a line of products for 10% off of retail, Okay, it's nice to get a little discount. 10% is not a huge discount, but it's nice to get a little discount. And then, but if they give you 10% off, but then their expectations are so high that you have to work at a trade show and uh, do X number of posts a week on social media, you know, it's... And, you know, don't be seen using any product other than theirs, you know, if it's a line of baits or whatever it is. You can't get in too far. Just for the sake of saying, oh, well, I'm pro staff for this. Remember, that pro, it is promotional staff, not professional. You know, most of us are not professional anglers. You know, and if there is any true pros listening to my radio show or my podcast, well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, but for the most part, most of us are just people who love to fish, 
uh, get out and you know we, we you know if we're tournament anglers we like the thrill of competition and we get into it a little further than others but at the end of the day we're not paying our bills we're not buying groceries every week based off of what we make or don't make fishing tournaments so don't don't get in over your head uh, I've been lucky I've got some great companies that I represent uh, whose products I you know truly believe in and the deals are a good fit for me and that's what it comes down to is it a good fit for you are you okay with spending hours of your time for 10% off well you know if you're talking big ticket items you know if ranger boat comes along ranger boats comes along and says uh, you know we'll give you 10 or 15% off a boat but you have to do this, 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 and this. Well, you know, that 10 or 15% can equate to thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, if Joe Blow next door, who just started hand pouring his own baits and has no, uh, no real product line to speak of yet, says, well, I'll give you 10% off, but I want you to come to three trade shows this year and uh, I want X number of social media posts and Facebook pictures and Instagram pictures and all this sort of stuff, well, that 10% off, you know, off the price of a bag of baits, you know, or a few bags of baits doesn't, uh, doesn't go very far for your time, so just be careful what you get into because there's a lot of great companies out there uh, and they are looking for great staffers but there are also some duds. <clears throat> so before you get obsessed with the idea of, oh, I'm getting a staffing deal, I'm getting a staffing deal, just do some research. Take a look at the deal. They're going to have to tell you what, you what they're offering. And, you know, once they tell you what they're offering, then you can you make your final decision that, you know, yay or nay. So I just wanted to touch on that again. Uh, just because it's something that I've had a couple people ask me about recently and you know about how they they go about getting them and what they should be looking for and this sort of stuff at the end of the day it's about what works for you and what you're willing to commit and uh, you know just just be careful it's it, it's a you know same as anything else in life it's a buyer beware type situation so I uh, just don't want to see anybody get burned so j just be careful with what you do and uh, if you take a little time and do a little research, if you're that interested and you're, you're, you're into it enough, I'm sure you'll find the right fit for you. Something I neglected to mention, as some of you may have noticed, I have deleted some of the content from the Spreaker website. I have to uh, keep my, store, my, my, my time storage to a certain level. Uh, so I've had to remove some of the content from Spreaker just to free up some space for new shows. Uh, but that being said, the shows are not gone. They are still available. You can find them on YouTube. All you have to do, just search Donald Patterson or N.B. Basson, and uh, you, will find, you will find all the shows there, uh, along with a few videos that I have uh, posted along the way. I've just started getting into videos. I haven't got a lot up. I've only got a couple couple videos on there but I'm working on that that's going to be something I'm looking to expand on a little bit uh, going forward so <coughs> excuse me once again just look that up on YouTube and you'll find all our, our past episodes and all new episodes go there automatically as well so if you subscribe to the channel you will get notifications every time you know a new show is posted and uh, you know you'll be able to check it out whenever you see fit so, okay, that's items one and two off of my checklist. Uh, item three. I should have mentioned this in part one of this week's show, but uh, I forgot. Corey Johnson, Chris Johnston, Johnston, Gussie, Curtis Richardson, all the Canadians that have gone south of the border this year. Uh, you know, Charles Sim going to the Bassmaster Classic. It's been a, it really has been a great year for Canadian anglers. 
you know, the, the, the guys, especially, you know, Chris, Corey, and Gussie have all done, you know, really well on the FLW Walmart tour. Uh, you know, getting some top 10, top 5 finishes, cashing some checks. Uh, oh, crap. I, I apologize if I get this wrong. I believe it was Chris was awarded FLW Rookie of the Year. Uh, Walmart Walmart Tour Rookie of the Year. So, I just want to kind of tip a hat to them. Uh, congratulations to them for all they've done. Uh, and to all Canadians that are looking to, to pursue that route. You know, these guys are definitely proving that even though we, you know, we're, we're, we're born and raised and live in the Great White North, that uh, chasing little green, little brown fish for a living is possible. So you put the time in, you put the work in, it is possible. So if that's a dream of yours, don't give up on it because these guys have definitely proven that it can be done. So, and then I guess I'm going to move on next to uh, how far would you travel or what, 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 what do you, you folks out there think of you know, traveling for, as weekend warriors, traveling for bigger events. Are you willing to do so? Uh, you know, there is work being done trying to bring some bigger stuff to, to here in New Brunswick. I know there's some guys from Nova Scotia that travel every year to the Berkeley B1 in Quebec. I know there's guys traveling to Ontario this year for at least one. I believe I heard there was one team that was attempting to do all three FLW Canada events in Ontario this year. Uh, you know, would you be willing to fish fewer local tournaments to save the money, had the entry, like set the money aside to throw the money in for an entry fee on a bigger event? You know, if you had a a, uh, you know, a bigger event coming to your home region, I'll say. You know, is that something that people have an appetite for? I know I personally do. Uh, you know, but I can only speak for myself. And, you know, I've spoken to a number of other people who do. But I'm just wondering how strong the appetite really is. Uh, you know, do people want to see it? Or are they happy with their club and, you know, the, their smaller club level type events or association events? If you've got an opinion or some input on that, please message me, message the, the NV Bassin Facebook page, or email me at nvbassin at gmail.com. I really, truly would love to see what kind of public opinion is out there. And if you're a listener in Ontario or Quebec or anywhere else in Canada for that matter, or say, you know, the northeastern U.S., Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, would you be willing to travel, say, to New Brunswick? if there was a big event coming here. Uh, I guess it just comes down to, to cure my own curiosity. Um, yes, I am involved in working to bring something bigger here to New Brunswick, but you know, I don't have the final say on the matter. There's a lot of people that have to have input. And, you know, if, I ha if I could blink my eyes and make it happen, then there'd be one here in no time. But there's a lot of work behind the scenes that has to happen that, that uh, you know, we have to do our due, due, due diligence and make sure that it's the right fit. Same as what I said about the staffing agreements. Make sure it's the right fit. So, please, if you have, like I said, if you have any interest uh, or any opinion on those sort of events, drop us a line at nbbassin on Facebook or nbbassin at gmail.com. We truly would love to hear from you. Ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps up this week's show. We're time is winding down so once again thank you to fish bomb outfitters carrot sticks rods southern yankee baits war dog lures northern michigan outfitters hooked on canadian angling to my wife and my son to all of you the listeners to my tournament partner jason thank you all very much because without you as well doing what i do is uh, next to impossible ladies and gentlemen stay safe set those hooks keep those lines tight have a good day